My very first video on this channel fixed the canon of the entire Highlander universe. No small feat, to be sure. If that sounds interesting to you, then follow the link in the description and go and watch it after this video is finished. So I feel that it's high time that I fixed another set of head-scratching decisions made by a different movie franchise. The first X-Men movie was released on July 14th in the year 2000. Nine years later, we received X-Men Origins Wolverine. Internet critics have not been kind to X-Men Origins, but I enjoyed the performance of Liv Shriver as Sabretooth and would love to see him reprise the role. Most fans know that Tyler Mayne played Sabretooth in the first X-Men film. Long-time comic fans were pumped to see Wolverine and Sabretooth duke it out on the big screen. However, the interactions that we saw between Sabretooth and Wolverine in that film were very underwhelming. In the first film, both characters had no recognition of the other, making their combat emotionally sterile. It was as though they were meeting each other for the first time. This is just bad writing. There is a deep history between these two characters that can be alluded to on screen without having to show it on screen. I just did a video about Indiana Jones, and in almost every movie, we meet a character that has supposedly known Indy for years, and the movie establishes this fact with just a few lines of dialogue. The same could have been done in X-Men, but it wasn't. Origins offered a flimsy plot device where Wolverine takes an adamantium bullet to the head, which selectively erases his memory. As of this writing, there is no in-universe reason for Sabretooth not recognizing Wolverine, or at least acting as though he doesn't. With all that said, I do have a fondness for shitty continuity, and it is one of the reasons why I started this channel. I collect broken and mismatched things and assemble them into a beautiful stained glass masterpiece. The ethos of canon fodder is to logically forecast narrative direction without creating or destroying any franchise elements. A comic book universe is full of time travel and magic, so the possibilities are endless. However, I try to keep my extrapolation as grounded as the setting will allow. If I were writing the script of the sequel movie, then the title I would choose would simply be Sabretooth. What I have written is a very logical explanation for why we have seen two men playing the same Sabretooth. So without any further ado, I present Sabretooth Cannon Fixed. This is going to get really meta, but just hear me out. We saw Deadpool travel back in time to kill his shitty X-Men Origins doppelganger. For the sake of continuity, let's assume that Wolverine, Sabretooth, and Deadpool still have their epic fight, and the new Deadpool is still beheaded. Logan still eats the lobotomy bullet, and Sabretooth walks away. Sabretooth is his code name, so I'll be using his given name, Victor, going forward. Victor roams around for a while until finally joining up with Team X and gets back into the mercenary life. Eventually, his hot temper has him challenging authority, and he has now become a liability. The shadowy leadership funding the mercenary group decides that Victor needs to be modified. During a mission, Victor and his team are in a jungle setting. They engage the enemy, and during the fighting, Victor is hit from behind, and everything goes black. Victor wakes up on a medical table and asks what happened. One of the doctor tells him that he was caught in a massive explosion, and it took some time for his wounds to heal. Victor sits up and feels his knuckles itching. Muscles twitch in his forearm, and three blades extend from his hand. The doctor tells Victor that the director wanted to give him some upgrades. The doctor tells Victor that the blades are made from adamantium and controlled by a biomechanical computer chip in each arm. His bones and joints have been reinforced with carbon nanofiber. The director was certain that Victor's immune response would have a violent allergic reaction to a bone coating of adamantium so he chose the carbon nanofiber as an alternative. There are micro-servos implanted at each large joint, so that even if Victor were to be rendered unconscious again, 
His body will engage a safety program and autonomously flee from danger. Victor pops his claws a few times and seems to be quite pleased by the upgrades. Victor gets dressed and leaves the lab and discovered that much has changed. Eventually, Victor learns about the attack on Liberty Island and watches footage of Logan fighting someone at the top of the Statue of Liberty. He learns that the man he saw fighting Logan is called Sabretooth. Confused, Victor goes looking for answers and eventually discovers the truth. After he was attacked and rendered unconscious, his head was cut off and put on ice and kept just beyond the brink of death. His body regenerated ahead, but this new Sabretooth had no memories and was more animal than man. Team X tried to reprogram the feral Sabretooth with limited success. This feral Sabretooth was a perfect killer and tracker, but unsuitable for missions that required sophisticated interactions. Eventually, Magneto found Feral Sabretooth and recruited him to his cause. As time went on, Feral Sabretooth matured into a childlike intelligence and was wounded after his combat on Liberty Island and fled into the wilderness. Team X decided that a re-engineered Sabretooth was the next and only option. Victor's head was connected to machines that provided oxygen and nutrients to aid in cell regeneration, all while keeping him in a medically induced coma. As his central nervous system began to grow and his bones formed, the motor control machines, carbon nanofiber, claws, and cybernetics were integrated into his body. Tracking and control systems were also installed. Now, in a rage after learning the truth, Victor storms through the headquarters of Team X. He finds the director and charges towards him, claws extended. A mere six feet away, the director pushes a button on a remote, and Victor stops dead in his tracks. The director tells Victor to behave like a good little puppet, or else. To further illustrate the point, the director stabs Victor in the stomach. Blood begins to pour out, and his wound isn't healing. Can't heal. <sighs> the director puts the remote into Victor's face and tells him that his healing can be turned off if he decides to behave badly. Another button push and the wound closes. Victor regains control of his own body and stands up to face the director. The director turns to leave, but pauses to add that if Victor tries to kill him, a toxic chemical cocktail will be released into his bloodstream, and then he leaves. Victor contacts Deadpool, and he asks him to help find the feral Sabretooth. The two men track down feral Sabretooth, and they have their own rumble in the jungle. Feral Sabretooth is much bigger than Victor, but with Wade's help, they defeat him, and Deadpool cuts off feral Sabretooth's head. Victor moves the head away from the body and turns to Wade and says that it is time. Kneeling down, Victor readies himself for what comes next. Wade, with one swift stroke, cuts off Victor's head again. Wade picks up Victor's head and says that he feels bad about what happened all those years ago. After all, it was Logan that cut off his head, not Victor. It was Wade that had attacked Victor from behind and cut off his head the first time. Team X had paid him well, and at that time, it was just a job. But after seeing what they did to poor Victor, and it was such a terrible thing, Wade wanted to make things right. Wade brings Victor's head over to the body of Feral Sabretooth, which was Victor's body originally anyway, and places the severed head up against the open neck, and the flesh begins to knit together. After a few minutes, the reunited Victor rises up and walks over to Wade and the huge fire that he has started. Victor sees the puppet body and decides to burn it to ash and crush the bones to dust. Wade prepares to leave and Victor thanks him for his help. Victor strips the clothes off the dead body and makes sure every last ounce of flesh and blood is totally consumed by the flames. He crushes the bones to dust and then diffuses the ash into a nearby stream. Victor returns to the Team X headquarters and cuts a bloody swath 
through the other mercenaries, and he has a showdown with the director. The director tries to use the remote against him, but Victor lunges at the director and tears out his throat. The credits roll, and in the after credit scene, we see Wade from behind nursing a baby with a bottle. As the camera pans around, we see the baby has the head of feral Sabretooth. So how did I do? Clearly what I have written is a very basic overview. I suppose there could be any number of ways to fill this plot hole. I could have made Tyler Mayne a clone, or even his son. Also, I wanted to pay off something from X-Men Origins and Logan. Victor wanted the adamantium infusion also, but Stryker said he wouldn't survive it. I gave Victor the adamantium claws as an homage to Logan, and to soft reboot Wolverine after a fashion. I remember having the schoolyard debates about how much damage Wolverine could recover from. This one kid was convinced that even if a single cell remained, that Wolverine could regenerate a full body in time. Which I thought was just stupid. Where would this cell find the energy for cell division? Can Wolverine cells metabolize elements from the air or soil? Wouldn't we see little clones of Wolverine running around everywhere after his fights, which are usually shedding a lot of his own blood? With some mutant powers, the line between science and magic is blurry. I figured that Sabretooth's body had enough energy stored and material stored to regenerate a new head. However, I wasn't convinced that a head alone could regenerate a whole new body. I also wanted to explore the macabre with how invasive the modifications were to Victor. Ultimately, I thought how cool would it be to have a fight between the two movie versions of Sabretooth. I had considered having the cybernetic body run away after Victor's head was cut off, but I wanted to get to the end. Alternatively, I could have written a fight between Victor and his old cybernetic body, but I felt that it wouldn't add anything narratively. Anyways, this is my attempt to put my finger in the dike that is the movie Sabretooth plot hole. If you were entertained by this video, then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. A huge thank you to all my subscribers. The channel passed 100 members a few weeks ago, and I really do appreciate it. I would love to reach the 1,000 subscriber milestone, and every viewer has the power to make that happen. I'm very grateful for all the interactions and the continued support. Please leave any video ideas or suggestions in the comment section below. Until next time.